the blueprint of the society we live in today was being laid down in the 1950s. First jet travel, consumer society, television, the media landscape, supermarkets, motorways, airport, the airport culture. All those things we take for granted and which shape our lives today were being defined for the first time in the 1950s. And I wanted to write about this world of change, threatened with nuclear war, with sort of science for the first time being seen in a rather sinister hour. People by the 50s had lost that optimistic confidence and the ability of, of science to fulfill all the dreams of mankind. Instead, you saw science about to fulfill all the nightmares of mankind. The prospect of nuclear war worrying was hours away. I think one may see a completely new kind of fiction being created. I mean, an in, a genuinely interactive fiction, and this would apply to film as well, where the uh, spectator would not be a passive observer of, of events taking place on a screen, um, but actually be in the uh, imaginary space of the uh, film uh, and dictating the course of the action. Now, this of course leads itself to incredible possibilities. I mean, one will, let's say, be able to take part in the assassination of uh, President Kennedy and perhaps play the part of the assassin, Oswald, simultaneously swap seats with, uh, you know, with uh, Jackie and sit beside the president as part of his head is, you know, blown to pieces. The possibilities of inter genuinely interactive virtual reality uh, are limitless. I mean, one can imagine the human race des deciding to climb, it, climb into the virtual reality system and not come out again. I think it's possible that science fiction has now come to the uh, end of the road, uh, and there are people who think it's dead. It's won its victory. I think this is the reason why, if it's over, it, it's over because it's, it's, it's won and decided to leave the battlefield.